Hello, I'm Mark Blunden and this is the Standards Tech and Science Daily. Coming up, the centenarian veterans using AI to reveal the horrors of war. But first, Elon Musk's Neuralink has unveiled a clip showing a paraplegic man apparently using the company's brain chip technology to play computer chess. Noland Arbor can be seen using the tech to move pieces on screen in the video posted to X in the States. And he says he's also now able to play all night sessions of the empire building game Civilization VI. It just became intuitive for me to start imagining the cursor moving. Um, basically, it was like uh, using the force on a cursor <laughs> and I could get it to move wherever I wanted, just stare somewhere in the screen and it would move where I wanted it to. The 29-year-old was a keen chess player before a car accident eight years ago left him paralysed from the shoulders down. Neuralink's chip works by a robot surgeon placing the implant, detecting electrical signals in an area of the brain controlling movement. And this is all done via removal of a chunk of skull to connect electrodes bridging chip and brain. The surgery was super easy. I literally was released from the hospital a day later. Um, I have no like cognitive impairments. However, there's been widespread concerns about ethics after development was linked to the deaths of 1,500 test animals. Next, remains of the world's largest dolphin have been uncovered in the Peruvian Amazon, revealing the mammal that lived 16 million years ago, measured up to 11 feet long. The University of Zurich researchers found a skull fossil and say it belonged to the largest dolphin ever discovered which is believed to be related to the modern-day river dolphin. The fossils suggest that Pebanista yakuruna had poor eyesight, an elongated snout and many teeth. Now, a team of London researchers find that artificial intelligence could help predict the type of health conditions a patient is likely to develop in the future. They programmed a chat GPT-style AI tool called Foresight with information from NHS and American Health Records. It was developed by researchers from King's, UCL and guys in St Thomas's who trained three different models of Foresight using data from more than 811,000 patients. Foresight was given 10 possible disorders a patient may experience next and the study finds the AI correctly identified conditions between 68 and 88% of the time, depending on the data set used. Next, visitors to America's National World War II Museum will be able to interact with 18 veterans, telling their stories from the horrors of the battlefield to enduring captivity as a prisoner of war. We can do by mechanical devices what we're not going to be around to do in the future. There are fewer and fewer World War II veterans and a lot of people who will never see one. That's 98-year-old Theodore Britton Jr., a Marine veteran who fought in the Pacific Campaign and Korean War. The New Orleans Museum exhibit uses AI to let visitors hold conversations with digital likenesses of the veterans. And here's 102-year-old Olin Pickens, who was captured in Tunisia in 1943 as the 805th Tank Destroyer Battalion was overrun by Nazi forces and he spent the rest of the war as a POW. I'm making history to see myself telling the story of what happened to me over there. I am so proud that I'm here, that people can see me. Now visitors can trigger a conversation with a veteran at the push of a button to bring history to life. Now. America's Surgeon General warns that Generation Z face what's being described as an early midlife crisis, partly caused by constant exposure to social media. Dr. Vivek Murthy was responding to a global well-being survey that found 15 to 24-year-olds are increasingly less happy than older generations. Dr. Murthy says allowing children to use social media was much like allowing them access to medicine, not proved to be safe. Speaking to The Guardian, he cited research that found US teens were spending nearly five hours a day on social media on average, and a third were staying up until midnight on school nights on their devices. Let's go to the ads. Stay there for more news from the World of Tech and Science Plus. Climate change link to the price of Easter eggs. Why not hit follow in the meantime and give us a rating? Welcome back. 
research by the non-profit Energy and Climate Intelligence Unit finds the price of cocoa has soared ahead of Easter as the impact of climate change is worsened by the El Nino phenomenon. The price of cocoa beans earlier hit a record high of more than £6,500 per tonne. comes as the world's largest cocoa exporters, Ivory Coast and Ghana, have been hit by extreme weather in recent months with rainfall more than double the 30-year average for the time of year, hitting yields and causing plant rot. The ECIU says almost all cocoa globally is grown in countries that are most vulnerable and least well prepared to cope with the worsening climate. Next, the University of Copenhagen study suggests smokers may have more belly fat than those who lay off the cigarettes. Research focused on visceral fat surrounding the internal organs in the abdomen, which is linked to a higher risk of heart disease, diabetes, stroke and dementia. The study published in the journal Addiction found that both starting smoking and a lifetime of smoking may increase visceral fat. And finally, Facebook has announced the reprise of the poke button, one of the platform's founding features dating back to 2004. The popularity of the poke has recently soared 13-fold after web developers made the button more visible, allowing users to nudge each other hello. And it's caught the interest of Gen Z and millennial users aged 18 to 29 who make up half of all pokes. You're up to date. Come back at 4pm for the latest news, interviews and analysis from the Standard Podcast here in London. And we'll be back tomorrow at 1pm.